Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Yakuza Fiance Season 1, Episode 2. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Uh, Yoshino is doing everything she can to avoid Kiroshima because he's doing everything he can to follow her around, and she wants some peace and quiet. Once again, it's just, I don't know what he's thinking. He puts on that fake smile, but I've seen a little bit of the scary person that's underneath, and I just don't know how to make heads or tails of this situation. Once again, she's going to stick it out because her dad told her to, and she made, she determined last episode to stick it out, selling her kidney, scaring the other girls at school that were kind of bullying her and giving her a whole bunch of uh, gaps. She was like, yeah, she put them all in her place. And now, that was interesting because Kirishima's like, oh, I followed you because, like, that thing you have. Yeah, there's actually a tracker in that, which I'm like, he told you about that. Who's to say there's not more trackers? That didn't even cross her mind. Maybe that was the only one. But I think it's interesting that he decided, oh, I'm going to tell you about this tracker. He does say, like, well, I wanted you to know it from me first because if you found out later, you'd just be mad at me. But here you are mad at me anyway for me telling you that we had the tracker on you in the first place. But that's why I'm like, he told you about the one tracker. There's probably other trackers too, so you probably have to check everything you own or have. I just get that feeling like, would he really give up the one tracker? Because I'm like, he's probably always going to want to know where you are just for protection purposes. Because he can be a little, not little, very excessively protective of you. And I'm curious what that stems from. Like, does he really, like, love her? Because they sit down and, like, eat at a restaurant at one point in time. And she's like, well, the thing I like about you is how much of an airhead you are. And he's like, oh, the thing I like about you is everything. Especially when you talk about me and talk down to me like that, you know? Because we found out. Well, because this episode mainly revolves around... Uh, the, the larger group they're a part of, they're, like, second to the top. And the family below them was the um, Akaza, uh, or Akazu family. And... Uh, the daughter in that family, uh, Shiori, has disappeared. And now the question is, was she kidnapped? Would, or did she just simply run away? And it's like she's roughly around their age. So it's kind of a thing of they were going to mind their own business. So it's not really their business to get into. Because they're like, until we know what's really at play here, it's not our place to interfere. So they were trying to tell Yoshino, uh, Yoshino and Kirishima to kind of stay at home. Because Kirishima's like, oh, we don't have to worry about it. Like, let's just go hang out and I'll... Uh, I've already prepared dinner reservation for us and everything. But we also found out that Kirishima is not uh, their his grandfather's uh, grandchild because it turns out his grandfather doesn't actually have any children to have grandchildren. He's actually uh, his grandfather is actually his great uncle because he was kind of pawned off on him by. He talks about the fact that the matter is he was. He dodged the subject, but he's like, basically, he got forced onto his not real grandfather um, by family, like, when he was, like, 12 years old, in which Yoshino's like, wait, did you want to become a Yakuza? He's like, no, I was just kind of forced into the situation. I didn't choose to be in his house. And he's technically not a Yakuza, despite being part of a Yakuza family, because he, he, I guess so, and that's interesting, considering, like, this is your grandfather's brother, so it's like... Why aren't you, like, is that side of your family just nothing to do with the Yakuza? I mean, it might be a thing of there's only one occupant of the family that can run things at a time. And so because uh, Kirishima's biological grandfather isn't running things, like, that's kept the rest of the family out of the Yakuza business. Once again, they bring up his parents at one point in time. So that's why I'm like, him and Yoshino, like, what are their parents' circumstances? Like, I, I kept bringing up, like, are they gone um, do they just, like, want nothing to do with this world? It's like, if that's the case, then why is, like, Yoshino, like, you know, her grandfather's kind of got her in the middle of all of this, so it's like, her parents just must not be around, and I would assume the same things with Kirishima's family, like, his biological grandfather or his parents, like, because they never really went into details about what it was. Because later on, Yoshino finds out from that guy that was driving her, one of the two guys we got introduced to, well, properly introduced to this episode, was like, yeah, there was an incident where uh, Kitashima beat up and broke the bones of, like, 20 people, like, classmates and people aside, and that incident is kind of what led to him getting left with his, not, like, his with his great uncle. I was about to say, like, his fake grandfather, but his uh, uh, great uncle, so. But the home dude was like, yeah, but I, I don't know how true that is. You know, you know that's just hearsay. 
kind of an interesting turn of events I wasn't expecting the story to be. Like, I thought maybe there was, like, a legitimate kidnapping going on. And this might circle around to maybe Yoshino getting kidnapped. But we find out... Because there's a dead body that shows up. Uh, the Akuza family found a... Um, dead body and it was a guy that has ties to shiori like they would uh was it uh they were behind basically a bakura uh game scam and this guy ended up dead and shiori's missing but yoshino sees her and contacts kirishima and Kirishima's like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll make my way over there. But she's like, oh, you don't really have to go through all that trouble just because it could be the wrong person. I could be mistaken. But it also seems like something Kirishima went out of his way to do on his own. Because even though the dude was talking to his grandfather being like, do you want me to kind of interfere? He's like, no. If they end up getting killed, that's on them. I think that was kind of about... I mean, he could have been talking about any... He didn't get specific, but I can only assume that was specific and revolving around Kirishima and... Uh, Yoshino, because he's like, right, they get mixed up in it, that's their business. No, like, they're supposed to be outsiders to all of this. Because it turns out the territory they're in currently is uh, actually territory that belongs to uh, uh, Yoshino's family. Because it's kind of like, right, apparently, like, in Osaka, they, like, are the strongest one. And then uh, Kirishima talked about the territory divide here, where it's like, I think he was like, wasn't his family, like, no, he's like, somebody has like 70% and then the other 30% is, uh, between, like, the other three families that are kind of the main territories, so he's like, yeah, it's, it's basically been a three-way deadlock for like a hundred years, so. But either way, they showed up at the club or whatever that, uh, Shiori was at and once again she's dodging like like she's being her and her father are hanging low because it turns out the people they like stole 500 mil from are um people from um a Filipino mafia or whatever and Kirishima shows up being like hey don't you know me I saw you at the funeral which Shiori's like I don't know you which I'm like did it was he bullshitting or is it just a thing of oh I saw you at the funeral but you didn't see me and we didn't really talk so I remember you obviously but you never saw me and I never stood out to you so it's kind of a situation of like wait are you just here to kill me but he's like no I'm not here to kill you he's like but the people who are those from the Filipino mafia where you uh you cause some issues you cause some problems and so that in itself ends up being the main issue here it's like your nonsense everything that you and your father like all this bs is causing issues for the main family now that's why it's a problem once again Kirishima seems to I mean it's kind of a thing of He's kind of taking this upon himself. Like, no one ordered him to do it. I don't know if it's, like, some obligation he feels like that he was brought into this family so he feels the need to do this. Or is it just a part of him that seems to thrive in violence and it's just like, yo, I'm looking for an excuse to pop off. So, yeah, what really popped him off was, like, uh, Yoshino getting hit. And the other guys that are on Shiori's side are trying to fight and then, like, Kirishima attacks them. Even stabs that one dude in the eye with a fork. And for him, it's like, because what pissed him off was like them saying, like, fine, you get out of here, or we'll let you go. And Kirishima's like, no, they're not just going to fucking walk away. That's not how this goes. And so he's like, I'm basically, no one's walking out of here because I'm going to basically murder you all. And so he proceeds to beat the ever-living shit. We haven't even gotten to the guys that actually, the one guy and his cronies who actually knocked Yoshino's down. It's the other guys. He's like bashing him in the head with shit and punching him repeatedly and for Yoshino it's like right the story she heard about him breaking the bones of like 20 people she's like I can see that I've seen that violent side saw him covered in blood and saw what he did in the alleyway last episode but just like that like persistent violence or just so like he almost looks so like dead behind the eyes as he's like doing blow after blow after blow to this one particular person and turns into a tussle he gets stabbed in the leg with a knife but doesn't stop him and he doesn't like doesn't kind of respond to it at all but Yoshino was like I've had enough of this like she's like right this isn't about him being strong this is about me being weak so she stands up on her own and starts bashing that one dude in the head with uh the air dryer that she was trying to replace I think, I think, yeah, because she was trying to replace, not re maybe replace it, but replace, like, the plug for it because it's, like, Osaka and Tokyo have different outage levels and stuff. And so, 
I think, I don't remember if the hair dryer, that might have been the new one she had already gotten. That might not have been the old one she was dealing with. I think that was probably the new one. But yeah, busted him across the head. And then he saw that Yoshino was bleeding and started beating on that other guy more. Because he's like, oh, I'm not going to kill you. That'd be too easy. So I'm going to make you bleed 10 liters of blood. Which Yoshino was like, yo, stop it. Like, that's not worth killing him over it. But he was like, but you are threatening to kill them. And she's just like, let it go. You know, they're getting their ass whooped. Wait, where's Shiori? And she's knocked down on the ground. I don't know if she just got knocked out during the tussle because he did like kick one of the dudes towards the other so she could have gotten easily caught up in the crossfire of stuff going down so and i just love how like he was just like oh i'm so dead tired he wraps his arms around yoshino it's just like it's a lot dealing with this guy you know it's a it's uh too many layers of overbearing crazy so but then he shows up at school with an um, a bandage over his eye because he's like, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of price to pay because I was kind of in territory that wasn't ours doing shit. So I don't know if that's like a, one of the others punished him or whether his grandfather punished him for that. Whatever the case, maybe that was kind of like, yeah, this is kind of what I get for doing that. But he also presents her with 10 mil because like it's like a split from the uh, 500 mil uh, from the uh, Filipino Mafia. And he wants to pay her back because he's like, yeah, I was going to actually try and sell one of my organs to uh, pay back that four mil from last episode. But she's like, he's like, yeah, but I wouldn't have been able to do it in time. And this is, he's like, I, I would have sold one of my corneas, but I only would have gotten like a hundred grand for it. So, but she's like, yeah, you don't actually need to pay me back. But he's like, I want to, you know, because he's kind of like under that pretense of just kind of like, I want to do whatever I can for you i'm so in love with you and i want to i want to do right by you in this regard so i don't know what happens to that money going forward because she didn't want to accept it and i don't think she does so what happens to that i have no idea but as they're leaving school because it's like oh like uh he wants i think aren't they going to go eat or something like that but then he sees like i kept saying last episode and i could be a hundred percent wrong it looks like that's supposed to be his twin brother which i was like how does that work um not unless it's that we find out like maybe he was taken in by another family or maybe because I mean they talked about him being adopted by his great uncle but if that is his sibling and it just feels like that is like I said they look like they're supposed to be twins but maybe it's a thing of they're not and I'm just being stupid but they look a lot alike just different hair and eye colors but just that like look Kirishina gives him at the end as they're just looking at each other so I'm like what's the beat? Not a single word spoken between them. They just both kind of go their own ways. And I'm like, what is that all about? Like I said, it feels, I mean, considering like it seems like maybe one part of his family might not have anything to do with the Yakuza stuff. Maybe that one sibling is kind of tied to that. But as we can see from like the opening and ending, he does have the tattoos too. So like I said, not unless he ended up going to a different family. If they, I, I don't know. I'm so curious like what that's all about because i i kind of want to know but i also don't want to look ahead and stumble across something to confirm my thoughts of like like i said i could be for two episodes in a row i could be a hundred percent wrong about the twin thing you don't have to tell me who the character is once again these are like just rhetorical like letting you know my thought process and stuff like that but i don't want the actual answer until the show actually tells me yes i know like the manga is already further along would be able to tell me those but my point is i i'm waiting for the show to end up telling me what their circumstances are but i'm just Kirishima continues to be an enigma and everything around him and those related to him so I'm, I'm interested to see where the next episode ends up taking us going forward with all of this but really that's all I wanted to talk about so the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye